Good thing I'm not hauling anymore. <laughs> hey, it's Care. Welcome to my take at the lake. I am not hauling anymore, but I have a haul for you nonetheless. Yeah, my friend Leanne stopped by. Her and her mom were out thrifting, and boy, do I have a haul to show you today. One thing that helped me when I was starting to junk journal and do all of these paper crafts, altered books, glue books, etc. As I watch lots and lots of haul videos, it helped me a great deal when people told me what they were going to do with those things or how they would use them or ideas on what they would be good for. So I try to do that here in my own haul videos. This is not even half of the stuff. I have a whole big box right here that I will be pulling from, but this is going to get us started. One thing I thought was really super cool was she got this for a dollar and I recognize that that is a Walmart clearance sticker I had no idea that they have good ink decent ink anyway I think it's good ink anyway we both thought it was purple because it has a purple a purple label on it but it says right here black drawing ink so I think it's black ink either way it's awesome because remember at Christmas time I got myself a beautiful dip pen to play with. I have calligraphy pens that I always like to think that I'm going to get good at one day. So I'm thrilled to have good ink. Uh, and for a dollar, go check out your Walmart. I didn't even know they carried it. Here it says Black India Ink too. India Ink is fabulous. So glad to have it. Thank you, thank you. Some really fun rubber stamps of a boxer. Look at those big sad eyes. It looks like he has just totally black eyes, but there's tiny little highlights and whatnot in there. So in real life, he doesn't look quite so eyeless. He's beautiful. Boxer. Gorgeous fern. I'm amazed how much I have one fern, of course it's different, tall skinny fern stamp that I've used quite a bit. I'm surprised, you know, because it's kind of on the botanical side and we all know how she feels about botanicals, but I, I quite like it. A goose, a Canadian goose. This would be good for the nature journal that I just started, my background birding nature journal that I just started anything michigan anything outdoorsy anything lodgy i can use this for and i like to every now and again, for every project just put something random in in a in a sort of pigeon toed goose might be just the ticket and the chickadee so cute little black cap chickadee they're so adorable mine are skinny all the pictures i've ever seen are people when they draw and paint them they draw them like little chubby fat little round birds and mine are just teeny teeny little birds a cherub there's more stamps but they're at the bottom of the box so we'll come back to that so stamping what do i stamp for the stamps you can you, you can make faux washi tape you can do Lots of fun stamping as backgrounds. Use rubber stamps on master boards, which can then be cut down for journal cards, postcards, artist trading cards, or coins. Anything that will take a stamp, you can stamp on glue books. I read a question in the comments, not my comments. I'm not sure where I read the question, but they said, I didn't know we could paint in a glue book. And that just struck me as such a goofy thing. Like, it's your project. It's your book. You can do anything you want in it, including stamping, including adding stickers, including painting and adding three-dimensional stuff and, and daily ephemera from your daily life, ticket, tickets and ticket stubs and receipts and anything goes in any of these projects whether it's a glue book or a junk journal or an altered book or a traveler's notebook or anything that you're doing there are no rules it's your project so widen your horizons and 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 if you want to throw paint on the background of your glue book pages by all means if you want to throw paint on the foreground of your glue book by all means there are no rules. It kind of, that story, that question just kind of broke my heart. Like, really? I, I, you're asking permission or, or you feel like you've been granted permission to paint in your glue book? Wow. <laughs> it made me very kind of sad. 
Corgi, look at him hiding his little corgi butt in some boxer shorts, chasing butterflies. He's kind of metallic. He has a little bit of a shine to him. He's so cute. These are greeting cards, just little blank inside little note cards with matching envelopes. Very fun. Have to do a Bitsy chat. Bitsy's doing beautifully. Next up are these blank books. I think these are fantastic. They're such a nice size. Journals, they're nice and sewn in. So if you wanna use this as a tiny glue book, something like this, as long as they're sewn in, you're good to go. I recently did a don't waste your watercolor thing and I used a tiny composition book and it's glued in and all the pages are falling out. I kind of knew that going in, but I did it anyway. So when you're looking for little journals, whether you're thrifting or at Walmart or Meyer or wherever, Target I think sells little journals like this, the dollar store sells stuff like this, make sure they're sewn in and then you can bulk them up six ways from Sunday. Make sure to work around, don't work front to back, otherwise it will get kitty wampus on you, but do a few in the middle, do some in the back, move to the front, and then do it again. Do some toward the middle, toward the back. These are great for little art journals. Put this in your backpack, your go bag, your hip bag, your purse, your work briefcase, whatever you carry every day, this is the perfect size to put a pen on or a pencil and do some urban sketching. I love, these are some of my favorite pens. They're Pilot Precise V5 RT and they are fantastic for fine liners, for urban sketching. For I like to combine sketching with writing. So I might sketch on this page or write on this page and sketch on that. I might do a sketch and then journal around it. But this right here, these two things in any backpack, and you have room for this in almost anything you carry. This is an art to go kit. You can color it later. You can add images later. You can add stamps later. You can do all kinds of things later. But when you're out and about, take this. Write down the ideas as they come to you that you want to do, that you want to try, that you want to write about. All you need is a trigger, something that will trigger that memory and keep a list of all the things you want to try. This could be a great commonplace book. When you hear a quote, write it down right away. When you Again, when you have an idea, write it down as it's occurring to you because they go away and sometimes you don't get them back. So I love these for all kinds of reasons. They're super smooth and I love the craft. It's not craft paper, it's kind of shiny, but it's craft paper color with the brights. They're just so fun. So I'm so excited to have these. I'm not exactly sure how I'll use them because there's so many options, but I will use them for sure. I'll get this one out of the way because it's kind of an odd duck. One of my favorite subjects to read about is writing. I love to read about writers, writing, the writing process. This is my beach read. If I'm going to go hang out at the beach or the lake and read, this is the kind of stuff I take. John Garner's fabulous writer, both fiction. He does some poetry, which I've not read. Some children's stuff, some dragon related things that some of you might enjoy. But this is all about, and he's written, I think he wrote eight novels before he died. He died really young. Uh, 1982, he died at 49. Very sad. But in that short time, in his 49 years, what has he got here? 10 volumes of criticism, five books for children, two works of poetry, two collections of short stories, and eight novels. You know, you might as well say in 30 years, maybe, maybe 35 years, depending on how early he started writing, but that's a lot of writing for such a, a short life. So I've already started reading this. I got started reading this the day she brought it over. I love it. I, I have some John Gardner books in my writing books, but of course they're in the basement right now and I couldn't find this one. So maybe I don't have this one, but it sure sounds familiar. I don't care. I'm going to read it again and love it all the same. These books, you get a lot at the, at the St. Vinny's stores or the thrift stores. They have these by the dozen. They're by Sunset or all kinds of different companies make them. This particular one is decorative paint and faux finishes. Now I will take a good look at this. There were some things in here that 
I've not seen before that I think would be fun to try if, if I were going to repaint a room. Like this one looks like looks like tiles, but it's just a, a faux painted look. I really want to know how they did that. It looks like limestone blocks. I think that's really cool. So I'll read it, read the bits I want to learn about, but then I will cut it up or I will tear the pages out that I like. Like there was some color swatches here. I might tear these out and and use these for they're a little bit too big for twin cheese, which are two by two. These are probably three by three. And that's fine. These would make great backgrounds for clusters. They would make great backgrounds for twin cheese. Uh, there's these little guys. I think these might be inches, which are just little inch by inch square art pieces. These would make great backgrounds. You can sketch on these and doodle on these. In fact, I was going to do this on its own video, but since we're talking about it, and since somebody already kind of beat me to the punch, I've, I got these a long time ago. I have uh, some ideas on what to do with these large paint chip holders. If you've ever seen or watched Caged Fishes videos, she has meander books. And I thought these pre-folded books, if you glue them all together in different ways, would make great meander books. I've not made one yet. I've kept these though for a long, long time. But I've also since thought these would make great tiny little doodles. You're, you're constrained to these tiny little squares if you want to practice hands or heads or dog's noses or f different kinds of flowers. Having constraints like this, size-wise, color-wise, makes you so creative. And you have all these little, it would be so cool if you just picked, like, let's, let's say flowers. You could just do a different tiny little botanical drawing daisies and buttercups and forget-me-nots just the flower not the whole thing because you only have so much space but you could do that this would make i think these would make great little sketchbooks these longer they would make great urban sketches like a, a pier or a, a, a boat harbor or a city block or a pub, something that you're out sketching, a coffee bar on the inside, a salad buffet or whatever. I just think these would be fun and having that wood background that could trigger some kind of, that could that could just decide what kind of things you make. Like you might make a wooden boat on here or a wooden, some detailed wooden oars from a boat. I think these would make great drawing tools as well as great meander books. And these dark ones, get out your white gel pens and just doodle in each of them. Or doodle something on all over it, but, but skip the black part. And so you, you only have the white on these colored squares rather than on the whole thing. So you'd have to start your drawing and stop it there and then pick it up here. I think something like that would be fun. So there's all kinds of ways to use these kinds of things. Leanne didn't bring these, they aren't part of the haul, but since we're talking about these inches and twinches, three by threes, backgrounds, clusters, drawing spaces, urban sketching, doodling, so fun. I love miniature work, so it'd be great fun to do tiny little paintings on these as well. Watercolor probably wouldn't do. You'd have to do watered down acrylic paint or gouache would probably work beautifully on the darker paint, darker paint chips. But I've been holding that idea and holding that idea for a long time. I don't know what I was waiting for, but I think it was Meg Journals came out. I didn't watch the video, but I saw that she was using paint chip brochures. I don't know what she did with them, but you can only hold an idea for so long, then someone's going to come along and do the same do the same idea because ideas sometimes are not our own. They are they're out there for anyone to take. And once it's an idea's time, someone's going to do it. If not you, someone's going to do it. So when you have an idea, jump on it. I like to be the first. I like to be the original of something. I don't like to do things that have already been done. That's kind of a cool look. Anyway, Another thing that this would make a great journal. I've been watching people make journals out of books like this or magazines. Of course, you have to take, I would take out 
maybe a third of the pages because you know there there's quite a few pages this would be there's 200 pages in here that'd be a hell of a lot to fill and we'll you know it's so nice to finish something and when you have a 200 page journal you're trying to fill up it might seem like it's never ending and you would lose i think you'd lose interest in it and maybe even get frustrated so what i would do is first i'd go through this book and tear out any of the pages that i wanted to take like i love this moonscape painting in a bedroom so i would take that out some paper some of the books rip out easier than others their pages rip out easier than others i love that so i would take out anything that i saw that i liked Hopefully it'd be kind of random and they wouldn't all be in the same spot. This is cool that he's painting. He stenciled it, but then he's painting the details in so it doesn't just look like a white stencil on a dark color. I'll go back to find these. I would pull these out because I think they're awesome. So I would harvest it for the things that I want to play with. And if that wasn't enough, if I didn't find many... I would go through, let's see, we said there's 200 in. I'd take maybe every third or fourth page out or every page three and four out. Oh, here's some more. And these are in the back. The others were up in the front. What that does is it takes down the number of pages that you have to work with and it also gives you room if you want to put layers in here if you want to put a piece of paper over it or some paint and then some paper over it and you want to put flip-ins and tucks and tip-ins and all those things pockets and envelopes and it gives you room to grow it too but they're heavy duty it's got a gorgeous cover complete with a flap so you can glue that down and have a pocket. I would probably decorate this. I'd glue a piece of something on this or paint it and stamp it or do something to it. Then I would glue this at the top and the bottom so I'd have a pocket. I would cover the top or paint the top, somehow decorate the cover, leave the cover on because that gives the the whole thing more stability and it's a nice big size it's bigger than the books the nine by six that we're used to working in or the travelers tall and skinny this is a nice size if you do a two-page spread you got a lot of landscape to play with painty papers collage you could do anything in here it could be an art journal nice heavy duty paper this would take a lot of acrylic paint gouache mod podge it would take it all because it's nice heavy duty paper there's a whole bunch of painter tools i love my wood grain i make metal doors look like wood doors with this wood grain tool get a nice rubber one the last one i ordered from amazon is hard plastic or hardened silicone it's awful you want a rubber it's called a graining rocker and it just makes the best wood grain paint your base color you put you let that dry overnight and then you put your darker color over it whatever color your wood grain would be it should be a couple shades darker than your base coat usually and then while that is wet you put that down in strips and you just run this you rock this this thing down it and it just changes the wood grain on each of the strips that you paint and i always take one of these old chip brushes cheap you get them three for a dollar at at Walmart because their bristles are are stiff and kind of flayed and then just lightly feather that wood grain and no kidding a wooden door excuse me a metal door can look like a wooden door with ease with one of those beautiful beautiful projects I, I've done a, several of them and I just they turn out so well I love 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 doing it so that's what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to take out the pages that I want and I'm going to probably turn it into some sort of art journal because it's a fantastic heavy duty base to play with. Look at, look at, look at, look at, look at here. What is this? What's something different? What is this? Lovepops.com. We'll have to explore that. Let's see what this is. Love Pop Valentine's Day catalog. Beastlies! Look a little Boston. Love dogs. Yes, please. So they pop up. Look at them in their colorful masks. 
Oh, how fun! Look at the little dragonfly and the hummingbird. So cool. Wisteria. These are awesome. I love things like this because not everybody's going to have it, you know, and you're not going to see the same thing in every single. I like having stuff not everybody has. Those would be great in my dog. You know, we all have, oh, there, there he is again. We all have, you know, the same kind of ads. Oh, look close. There's the sideways one. That looks like a bulldog. So cute. That's fun. Something different. Now, these are interesting. They're, they're skinny little magazines. We have For Women First and Woman's World, it looks like, is the mix. Uh, one is a little bit bigger than the other, just by a hair. If we do that, we can see the difference in size. They're very thin paper. Oh, beastie. Very thin paper, so they're great for glue booking because they don't take up a lot of room. It doesn't bulk up your, paper, your project too much. The pictures in these tend to be a little duller. Even though this is pretty bright, you know, they look pretty bright compared to high gloss magazine like Simple Living or Family Circle or Better Homes and Gardens. These are more of a almost, I don't want to say newsprint because it's not. He's awesome. <laughs> I don't know what he is, but I'm taking him before I lose him. I have a, I have a project he'd be great in. So I could use this, obviously, for harvesting for glue book projects. And I've got truckloads of themes that I'm collecting for. I have a beastly book, that several beastly books that I'm collecting for. Look at that face, the little Pugalicious. He's so wonderful. Because these look vintage already, a lot of their food stuff looks vintage to me. This could easily go in a vintage Christmas book, and no one would know that it's from... 2023 it looks old already so these kind of images really work well in a vintage project whether that be glue book altered book junk journal whatever you're you're doing these once you've harvested them all would make great are these glued or stapled these are stapled so I wouldn't add stuff to these because the staples will not hold up. They will, it will come apart. The more stuff you put in, these pages will just pull up through these staples and they won't hold up. So don't, don't add a whole lot of stuff, but you can. I've seen people take these, fold them, fold the pages in half after you've harvested it for what you want. Fold the pages in half and glue them together. And then you have a nice, tall, skinny journal to work with. Super, super fun. What I would do if it were me, and I was doing this, this one, because it's in the center, I would, I would glue to the page over that staple and then maybe do something like this. So that center one is solid, a little more solid. And then all the rest, I would... In the back, I'd fold them to the front, and in the front, I'd fold them to the back. Leave yourself just a tiny little bit of space, maybe a quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch, so you're not going right into that spine. And then fold them down. Since this is on that side of the, the middle, fold it toward the back. Just so that these lay together nice. Crease them really good. Now that center one's going to stick out a little bit because I folded the two together. So it's going to stick out a little bit. And then when you get to your cover, have that, leave yourself extra room so your cover covers your skinny pages. Then you can cover it however you want. Um, as you go, I would glue them. Just a quick glue stick down there. Actually on this one because you don't want glue everywhere. And you have a nice tall base to work on. And that's a fun, fun thing to do. A tall, skinny versus, again, the 9 by 6 that we're used to. Also, I've seen people do this same process, fold them all like this, and then cut them in half. And now you have just this little guy, a quarter of the size, and those are super fun to work with too. So harvest them, 
make journals out of them if you don't want to do that after you've harvested them and gotten everything you want out of them use them as glue pads so that when you're gluing something you put your glue on it you don't get it on your backdrop you don't get it where you don't want it. You just use this as a glue pad. So many uses for various magazines. Lots to play with there. Thank you, Leanne. She got me this fabulous book. I think she said it was a penny. Why would you even charge somebody for it? <laughs> That's a penny, please. No, I can't make chains. Do you have a penny? <laughs> just take the book, for God's sake. Anyway, it is from 1941. Simon and Schuster, 1941. Isn't that awesome? I love this cover. This is so 1960s. I'm going to cut this, this piece out of this cover. There's 2,500 first names from Abigail to Zebediah with their nicknames, meanings, and origins in this book. And it's kind of like a, a name dictionary, which is kind of fun. It would be fun to... In, in pictures, there's pictures on every single page. Those can all be cut out. People make, you can make twin cheese out of them, inches out of them. You can use them in clusters, make little faux postage stamps. They're just the right size. I mean, there's a million things you can do with all these little pictures in an old book like this. She suggested, Leanne suggested, as I do, I like to put dictionary bits in, in my projects. And so... It would be awesome to to use this similarly. Elizabeth, I love that. Elizabetta, I love that name. Anyway, something fun to play with. Cost her a penny, and there's truckloads of things that could be done with it. I like just that piece. It's all aged up. Girls' names, just as a fun addition to a master board or a vintage collage. The same images on the back of the cover, so I am going to go ahead and right here I'm going to show you it's okay you will not burn in hell I'm going to take that image and I love that what's in a name so I'm going to take that here's the birthstones that would be a fun addition something to tuck into a journal of some sort I'll take the cover off here too because because I can and I wanna and it's that would be cool too the name game and it's all naturally aged and and old and yummy. It was edited by Winthrop Winthrop Ames. He sounds quite British, doesn't he? Winthrop. She saved me this way cool bag. It's from Amazon. But it's it's a bag. It's it's got a gusseted bottom like a grocery bag. And a sticky top. And so it's an envelope. <laughs> bag something very different i've not seen that this would make a long tall put a journal in here put your pages in here to the cover and there's a another fold here which could have another signature in a different spot so you could put a signature in here a long tall signature and then you'd have to deal with the sticky thing here and the signature here I'd leave this open, deal with that sticky, or maybe, you know, just leave it kind of like Velcro. You can open it and close it. It's re reopenable. I don't know. It looks like fun to me. I think, if I'm not mistaken, this little wax stamp was in with the, the Boston Chickadee and Goose stamps. Not the Boston, not the... I don't have a Boston stamp today. The boxer, it, but it wasn't. It was with the chickadee and the goose. It was in a Ziploc bag with an old-fashioned address label from somebody, uh, Mr. and Mrs. last name started with a B who live in Cincinnati, Ohio. Anyway, it's a wax stamp. You, you melt little pellets of wax on something and then you stamp it. And none of my names start with B, but Boston's starts with B and boxer and biatch starts with B. So I find all kinds of words I can use the B stamp for and I don't have any and now I have one and it's just cool. This is a shirt for Christmas. Pugs and kisses. Look at that little face and his little Christmas slippers. Look how cute. Christmas in July. Yes, indeed. 
that's what this feels like. Now the rest of this, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure is from her mom. So this is from Leanne's mom. Thank you, Leanne's mom. Something I've never heard of. This is from Kath Karen Elaine Thomas. There's that N-I-J-I -I name again. We were just looking at that. This video, last video, I don't know, they're all kind of running in together now. But that's the second thing I have come across by that brand. Anyway, it's Splash ink and that just i don't know it smacks of fun sprays don't you think it is acrylic mixing colors splashy liquid acrylics i don't think it's pouring acrylic that's different it looks like acrylic liquid ink maybe and it's the three primaries plus black oh my god i just think that looks like so much Fun. Brand new, still in the package. They were thrifting, so someone bought this and never used it, and now I have it to play with. Again, something I've never heard of, but it sure sounds fun to me. Leanne laughed because it has butterflies on it, and her mom doesn't know about my butterfly issues, but it's gorgeous. It was a $10 book on sale for $4.99 at Ross, but they got it at a thrift place. I hope they didn't pay $5 for it. I hope, hope not, because... That's what they paid regular price. If you're at a thrift store, it should be like a buck <laughs> or a quarter or whatever. should be less. But it's quite pretty, even though it's butterfly laden. It has... It does not come off. I thought maybe he was a, a tack pin or something that you could wear jewelry. But he's quite pretty. Deep purple. Obviously, it's gold embossed. Or foiled, I should say, with hydrangeas. Oh, it's it's beautiful. Front and back. Look at those beautiful flowers and stamps. It's gorgeous. Never been used. Never been cracked, really. Purple pages. I mean, but for the butterflies, it's perfect. <laughs> but you, something like this. Obviously, just a journal. It could just be a daily diary or a journal. It could be a garden journal. It could be a purple something or other if you want to start collecting purple things and putting those in here it is just a beautiful look at this vine even is shiny and wonderful so there's lots of uses for this and it's solid it's not a cheap crappy journal that you might get at a thrift store it's a very very nice journal now here we go with the stamps holy man and i'm always amazed at how intricate they are now with laser cutters and computer-aided design. Wow. Look at that haunted house. Unwelcome. <laughs> yes, please. That's gorgeous. Giant big stamp. Never been used. Giant stamp for Halloween. I love Halloween. Here's a wonderful Christmas dude. Little old Saint Nick. Little short fatty saint nick this is from stampin up this is from stampin up wishing you all the magic and wonder the season brings that's beautiful i would i love that santa was used it doesn't look like that one was used at all brand new stampin up stuff holy cats this one is called liberty for all 2001 so these are these are nice and uh vintage this is 2004 so these are 20 years old never used on that one this one says honor and liberty proud to be an american beautiful flag eagle uh, statue of liberty with a flag it says fourth of july army uh, i'm still working on doing a book for my uncle which is military has military stuff related to it um looks like none of them used oh and the stars the flag was used once wow pretty cool another little magical tree it can be christmas it doesn't have to be christmas with those stars and snow it can just be winter that's wonderful never yeah i don't think ever used school teaching stuff look at the crayon you know it's it's all rough and what do they call it like folk art i don't know it's just it's fun this is all from stampin up to a little stem with a flower on top little kid sunshine sunshine and apple for teacher that could go in my little nature journal just for fun so can well all of them i have apple trees growing in my yard thank you birds 
Those were used a few times, but, but they're like brand new. And the last, last thing in this huge box are sentiments, which don't like look like they've ever been used either. Thank you. This this would go in my Boston's book. It would go in Valentine's Day stuff. It would go in Mom and Me journal. It would go in my dog's journal. I mean, there's all kinds of uses for the X and XO. Um, the other ones, you know, if you're sending happy mail, happy birthday, or just for you, thinking of you, something simple. Again, never used. Look at that. Not even once. And a little tiny ink pad to go with. So even though I'm not hauling, holy haulness, wowzer. I have very generous friends and family, don't you know? This proof positive. Thank you very much, Leanne. Thank your mom for me. I did send your mom a text today and, and told her thank you. So hopefully she got it. So I hope that this gives you some inspiration what to look for. If you are going thrifting for your junk journal adventure, I have for you a free digital download uh, on my Patreon page. It is a shopping list according to category, organized for your shopping pleasure. I think it's five or six pages. You can download it, take pictures of it, keep them on your phone. You can download it, fold it up, print it, fold it up, stick it in your purse, take it with you when you're shopping so that you know what to look for when you're out and about. That is on my Patreon page. It is free. You don't have to sign up for anything, but YouTube doesn't let us link digital stuff or documents. And so I put mine on my Patreon page. So go over there and um, you'll have to, once you get there, there's a search bar and just put um, shopping list, thrift shopping list or something like that. And it'll, you'll find it. You might have to scroll through a few things, but that's okay. You'll find it. I have every confidence in you and it's free for the taking. So go get yourself a copy of that and enjoy your thrift shopping. In the meantime, please go love up your beastlies because you never know what tomorrow's going to bring. Matek at the lake, out for now.